The pressing Latino voting is not the only arrow in Ms. Angle's quiver, it turns out. Her campaign now soliciting donations to protect against Democrats, quote, trying to manipulate the election. Harry Reid intends to steal this election if he can't win it outright. As we've discussed on this news hour previously, defending against made-up voter fraud is a classic tactic for committing election fraud. Under the guise of protecting the ballot box, scare off the voters, especially the poor and disenfranchised, reluctant to run your gauntlet. Are Angle's claims made up? Nevada's Secretary of State writing, quote, No such complaint has been submitted to this office. But Ms. Angle is not alone in exploiting divisive fears in the campaign's final days. Talking Points memo reporting Democratic Congressman Keith Ellison of Minnesota, targeted by a Tea Party Nation email this weekend. That email listing reasons to retire Ellison, among them Ellison's religion, he is Muslim. Nor is Ms. Angle alone in trying to skew the voting. Florida Tea Party candidates yesterday accused the GOP of, quote, dirty tricks and illegal electioneering, electioneering rather. and nor is Ms. Angle alone in airing egregious ads. Though this ad of Republican California gubernatorial hopeful Meg Whitman only becomes egregious in retrospect, in hilarious fashion, once you have the full context. Before that, here's the relevant clip. My husband and I came here as newlyweds. We raised our family here, and the California dream came true for me in ways I could never have imagined. Now I'm running for governor to restore the California dream for everyone. Standard Republican Tea Party nostalgia for Norman Rockwell America? Not exactly, and not hilarious yet. But here she is sounding the same theme just last week. I want Californians to really know me. I want them to know that the reason that I am running is I want to jumpstart the California dream for every Californian. You know, 30 years ago, anything was possible in this state. She doesn't seem funny. What's so funny about Whitman's nostalgia for the California she remembers from 1980? Democratic candidate Jerry Brown explains in his new ad. You know, 30 years ago, anything was possible in this state. As governor, he cut waste, got rid of the mansion and the limo. Budgets were balanced. Four billion in tax cuts, world-class schools and universities, clean energy promoted, 1.9 million new jobs created. California was working. I mean, it's why I came to California so many years ago. Jerry Brown, the knowledge and know-how to get California working again. Joined here in New York by Chris Hayes, the Washington editor for The Nation magazine. Good evening, Chris. Good to see you, Keith. We'll get to uh, Meg Whitman's demo tape for the comedy store in Hollywood uh, and the inadvertent <laughs> endorsement of her own opponent in a minute. But let me start out here with this distinction that I drew between the voter fraud that Sharon Angle's can a campaign has sort of made up out of whole cloth and how that makes it easier for her to commit this actual crime known as election fraud. Look, I mean, this is this is one of these mythological bogeymen of the right, and mm -hmm. it is perennially in every election, whether midterm or presidential, that there is some massive conspiracy, you know, through the now defunct Acorn or other groups that are comprised of, of racial and ethnic minorities to implement systemic voter fraud and steal elections. In fact, there are people who still believe this. I mean, you run into them as a reporter who still believe the 2008 that ACORN right. <laughs> managed to steal the election. And what it does is it sort of licenses people to, to harass and intimidate people of color when they go to the polls. Now, we have had a, do, two centuries of battles in this country to give full enfranchisement rights to, to racial minorities. And we still have a situation in which the amount of Polling places in, in urban communities tend to be less than in white suburban and affluent communities in which voting rates often among those communities are lower. And so we still have a long way to go. This kind of licensing of intimidation doesn't help that. Broadly on Sharon Angle, she comes across as a true believer, you know, the stupid kind, the naive, I've never been out of my own house before, I believe this stuff, stuff. Yeah, totally. is that, but is that a false premise? I mean, does she know exactly what she's doing with an ad like that? Oh, well, I think she has to know. I mean, look, she, you know, anyone who can, uh, anyone capable of any sort of visual perceptual yeah. <laughs> um, input can understand what's going on in that ad, I think. I can't read Sharon Engel's mind, but I, I do know, I think that understanding this kind of core tribalist sentiment, that it's us and them, and he's on the side of them, and we all know what them looks like, that's like not a big stretch. I mean, that's part of American conservative right. vocabulary. It has been for a long time. It certainly is now during a time of economic peril. So I, I, I don't think there, there's a huge leap that she has to go through to make that work. And we see this now in a different direction in Minnesota with Keith Ellison. I mean, that's the, the, how much 
more raw can the sentiment get if you're saying that the reason he, he should not be reelected is he belongs to this religion. You are applying a test that is liber literally prohibited by U.S. law and the Constitution. Literally prohibited. And, and I think, you know, it's part of what to me is one of the most worrisome trends in, in what has been generally a sort of depressing election season mm -hmm. is, is the amount of... The, the degree to which it has become a mainstream view in, in right-wing America, in conservative America, and in the Republican Party, that we have, as Bill O'Reilly said on IMIS this morning, quote, a Muslim problem. That we have a Muslim problem. The world is a Muslim problem, and that actually, this is, I mean, when you start phrasing things in those terms, you begin to touch some sort of very uncomfortable historical resonances, and to talk about someone being unqualified for office or should be booted out because of the religion they have is just so anathema to everything that the founders conceived of when they drafted the First Amendment. We'll get back to that with Mr. O'Reilly later on, but I must ask you about the Jerry Brown ad, as funny as it is. Did it capture something unintentionally about these conservatives and this sort of this pristine view of a no. past that was largely constructed for them by liberals? See, that, 1980 California is liberal apex California. Exactly, and that's actually why I love that ad, and, <laughs> and, and because you're right, there is this very intense tension in the conservative vision. On one hand, conservatives are always standing athwart history saying stop, they're looking back in nostalgia. On the other hand, the country has gotten more conservative over time. The halcyon days of yore were in certain many important respects, particularly with respect to political economy, more progressive. There was the provisioning, the reason people moved to California was because of the provisioning of public goods there. Because they had a world class university system that mm -hmm. working class people could send their kids to. Because there were there, there, was, a, 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 there was a sort of social democracy that was created in California in the 60s and 70s that drew in this vibrant middle class. And that's what she's touching on when mm -hmm. she talks about that that's what people remember when they think yeah. about the glory days. They didn't. The glory days were not Ronald Reagan's governorship in California. It was Pat Brown and then right. Jerry Brown. Right. All right, we've exhausted that. Chris Hayes of The Nation, as always, great thanks for your time. Good to see you in person. Good to see you in person, too.